Welcome back to another episode of the Jaw Games Factorio Space Age, and today we are going to learn about nuclear. We got three nice blueprints for you, if that's your thing, that you can just use right out of the box. But we're also, at the end of the episode, I will go through some of the basics. Look out for the chapters in the description, because first I'm going to cover the three blueprints that are provided in the description. And then I will do a quick little tutorial on how to make your own nuclear reactor. If that's the thing you want to do. So let's get into it. Okie dokie, okie dokie. So the first thing we want to look at is what I would consider your first nuclear reactor. Uh, this one here is all at ratio and you've got your 48 48 heat exchangers and 80. Like it, subscribe. 80 steam turbines. So, this is going to be run by belts because, well, at this stage of the game, you probably haven't been to science yet, but you just really want to get some nuclear up and running. So, this is what I typically will use something like this. It could be made to scale more like you could have it tileable down up or down but i don't think that's necessary so what i have here is this is just controlling to view both belts and make sure that there's only going to be a max of four nuclear fuel on the belt and then these here are going to check to uh, check each reactor's temperature and make sure that there's only one fuel in there override stack so it's going to be very very tightly controlled to not waste any fuel so that you can keep your green shiny 235s for the covrex process and get that up and running as soon as possible while utilizing nuclear fuel uh nuclear power you know power nuclear power okay mm, the big reactor okay so this one is assuming that you have the requester chests you've been to space now there's only one const uh, decider combinator checking one of the reactors because they should all kind of work at the same rate uh, so there's no need to check every single one of them but then i'm just passing that signal along here and again what that's doing is it's just checking to make sure that the temperature of the reactor is less than 650 and the Everything equals T means that there's no fuel signal here, meaning that the way of saying there's there's no fuel in the reactor. For this one, I might even tweak it up to, to 700 just to make sure that there's enough temperature to get all the way down to the ends. But this one's in a city block and it's tileable. So the pipes go all the way to the left and right side and up and down. So it's very, very, convenient to use like you can just you can just stamp another one here and another one here and well there's one more reactor there but then it's all connected all of the pipes are already connected so there's no need to no need to do any pipe connections at all and if you build it by water then you can have quite a few of them six or eight of them all beside each other and just connect up one pump nowadays with the with the 2.0 fluid physics but yeah, that's it. That one will be in the description as well, of course. I'll have the three blueprints there. Let's take a look at the smallest option or the spaceship option. Okie dokie. So this is the one that is in is is for a spaceship, but you could use this as your first nuclear reactor if you really wanted to. It's just not going to be as efficient. Because if you look at these, they are all, uh, they're actually generating 120 each one of these has an output of 120 so that's three times the the output for the same amount of fuel so that's why even though it's a little bit you gotta wait just a little bit longer to get all four of these reactors up and and all of this this one's definitely better for a starter reactor it's much more efficient but this one's also efficient it's very efficient in terms of space and it is also storing excess steam so that it will only then insert fuel when there is less than half steam and the temperature is less than 600 and there's no fuel. 
with another way of doing that. Fuel is less than one. So that one's really it. This is again at ratio because you got your four to seven, which is very common for either a heat, a heat tower or a single nuclear reactor. But yeah, this one will be in the description. You're gonna have to put, of course, your uh, space platform thing here. You can't even put it here, of course, but yeah, you'll have to be connected to the space platform right here and you'll store some steam for keeping it even just a little hair more efficient. But there was also seven of these, so I was like, ah, that's a good spot for, for steam, uh, steam tanks. So that's it. That's all. Those are the three blueprints you can use in the description. And now a quick lesson on how to build your own nuclear. Great, so um, nuclear is, well, pretty simple actually. The thing is that the nuclear reactors need to be adjacent to get a neighbor bonus. And if we look at this, uh, the heat output increases when built, to next, built next to other reactors. And it gets a neighbor bonus of 100%, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> you can't see it in, in less unless you put fuel in it. But now you can see that these have a output. Uh, if I was just to move over, move myself over a little bit there, we got our neighborhood bonus output here. You can see 200% on each one of these. So yeah, if you had two of these, they are gonna have 100% bonus, which is not bad. But then of course with these two, they, they get quite a significant bonus. And then when you start getting even more you get even more bonus right so these these four in the middle they are going to have three beside each other so they they show a 300 percent bonus but so these ones can generate 160 and the two on the edges can generate 120 so that's the beauty of nuclear power putting them together you can't put them like this so you might think and i did too but you can't the, these these won't get a neighborhood bonus so even if we put fuel in all of these, this one has only a 100 because of this one. If we take this out, you can see this no longer has any neighborhood bonus. So it's uh, not quite like that. That doesn't work out. But from there, you need to get it to heat exchangers. So if we look at this, these are all producing 120 megawatts each heat exchanger here is going to consume a max of 10 megawatts so that's an easy ratio right so if you have 120 times 4 that's 480 megawatts output so then you just need 48 of these which is exactly what we have in this uh this setup here we got 48 heat exchangers then from there you have to do a little bit of math it's easier with the calculator because it's 103 steam output for each heat exchanger so if we have 48 that means that we're going to have 4944 and then hover over these it consumes 60 per second for the steam so again better use a calculator for this it's just easier unless you're a math whiz but that's going to equal 82.4 steam turbines for this type of setup which is exactly what we have here Except, um, yeah, I mean, you, I could put 83, but I, I end up with 82 on that one. So that is that. And it's, it's very similar. Like if you want to do an eight reactor here, it's, it's very, very similar. You just got to follow that system for the math. It's better to do this in a test world because you can uh, easily just put uranium fuel in there to get the exact output. So it's gonna have four at 120, and then it's gonna have four at 160. So we know four times 120 is 480, so 160 times four, and then 6, 640, 640 plus 480 is our good friend 1120. And then of course that means we need uh, it, it it doesn't work quite like that. 1120 divided by 10 is going to be 112. And that's how much we have here for the heat exchangers. We have exactly 112. And then 112 
times 103 means that we're producing 11,536 steam per second. And so if we do 11,536 divided by 60, that'll give us the 192.26 steam turbines. And I think I went a little bit over on this uh, and went with 196 just because of the symmetry. But that is basically the, the exact ratio there. So that's how you can calculate the ratios of it. And then of course, when you're doing this type of insertion, now that you can, you can make this setup extremely efficient by only inputting the fuel when the temperature is below a certain threshold, in this case, 700. And that's because if you just keep inserting fuel, it'll keep burning up to 1000 temperature and it'll just keep burning the fuel uh, for no particular reason. Like it doesn't have any additional effect. So it is nice to have that where we can now read the fuel, read the temperature. Then I also override stack size to one and I like to check to make sure that there's only one fuel in there so that you're not just checking the temperature because that's another way that I've seen people do it. Like they just do this and they go straight to here and they just say uh, enable when T is less than 700 and that's fine. But even with a override stack size of one, you might end up putting in two or maybe three fuel into there and then it'll burn up to a thousand. And I don't know, I just like the decider combinator to check two of those conditions in order to put your fuel in there. So that's really it. This last one, I guess, uh, with storing steam, that's an older trick from the earlier Factorio where we didn't, we couldn't read the statistics directly from the nuclear reactor but it still does help a little bit because you can store some steam which is just it doesn't lose temperature just sitting there so then you can use it a bit later and it kind of works like a battery or a backup in a way and that's nice it, it's not necessary but um, what it does is it allows us to store steam when we're not using very much power but the temperature of the reactor is still fairly high and we can actually get a little bit more efficiency out of it. And that can be great early on, like when you're starting to go to Aquilo and yeah, I mean, nuclear fuel is pretty hard uh, to, it's capacity of 10. So sending that up to space, yeah, it's, anyways, probably not necessary, but you know me, I like to be efficient, but that's really it. Uh, the basics of nuclear fuel and nowadays, of course, uh, you don't need to get as much water to each reactor uh, setup than that you used to, because this will be consuming, let's see how many, how much water this consumes 10.3 per. And so if we look at that 112 for the heat exchangers times 10.3 water, that's going to be 1153.6. So 12. 1200 water is what one offshore pump makes so i don't know if they actually changed that but like that's really really good you used to have like six or eight pumps pumping water into this type of setup but now it just works with one pump and that's it like it's it's actually really awesome to be able to just run this whole thing and then you know if you have like four of these side by side like i do in my series game that you just need four at least four offshore pumps pumping water into it so that's a final note on the water consumption otherwise i think that's it if you have any other questions or comments leave them in the comment section and look out for those blueprints in the description all right well uh, thanks for watching and uh, take care have a good one like and subscribe